A lot of what you'll be doing with scripts involves getting something to go somewhere else. Bash has a couple ways of doing this. First, let's look at pipes. Piping takes the result of one command and sends or pipes it into another command. For example, take a look at the result of listing the contents of this directory, which has a lot of things in it from the previous movie. That's a bunch of stuff. It would be nice to take that output and display it page by page. I can do this by piping the output of ls into the more command. And if you're looking for the pipe character, it's usually shift backspace, the key for which on most keyboards is right above the return key. But your keyboard might vary. And now I can take advantage of Moore's pagination. Redirection, on the other hand, works with a standard input, standard output, and standard error. That is, the input from the command line environment, the output to it, and the errors that arise when something goes wrong. Let's set up a little bit of an example here. First, I'll make another folder to copy to. And I'll make it so that I don't have access to read some of the files in this current folder. This will cause some errors later on, and that's what I want. So I'll copy these files into the other folder. The V here tells the CP command to be verbose, so we see each copy operation. And I'm specifying star to use file name expansion to match all of the files. Then I'm using the two dots and a slash in the destination path to indicate that other folder is a child of this folder's parent folder. That is, the CP command will have to go up a folder level to find other folder. And if I scroll up here, there's some errors. I couldn't copy some files, the ones named with 015, which you remember I blocked everyone from reading, and the other files copied just fine. So I'll clear the screen. I'll get rid of everything in that other folder. I'll write another command here, and I'll explain it in just a minute. These numbers, 1 and 2, represent the standard output and standard error, respectively. The greater than symbol represents redirecting the output from each of those somewhere else. So the successes will go to a file called success.txt, and the errors will go into a file called error.txt. I'm putting them one level up, so if I want to run this command again, I won't be copying my success and error files into the other folder. And that time there was no feedback. That's because I redirected both regular messages that would normally appear at the standard output and the errors to text files instead. This can be pretty handy if you want to capture the outputs of commands that you're running. Let's take a look at these files. I'll type cat dot dot slash success dot txt and then cat dot dot slash error dot txt. Cool. I'll clear out that folder again. You can also tell bash to redirect standard output and standard error to the same place. Here, using the ampersand to represent both 1 and 2. And I can see that everything's there. You can also redirect to a special location called dev null if you just want to get rid of and ignore the output from a command. For example, I could redirect the output of ls to dev null, and the results just go off into the great blue nowhere, never to be seen again.